There was a time when I was alone Nowhere to go and no place to call home My only friend was the man in the moon And even sometimes he would go away too Then one night as I closed my eyes I saw the shadow fly My ancestors came from Ireland to flee the potato famine also known as the Great Hunger, because the food the British did plunder. Irish need not apply, did read some signs, in their new home of New York City. But they worked to the bone, with a moan and a groan, life could be pretty gritty. Needless to say, I'm odds and ends, but that's me, I'm stumbling away. Slowly learning that life is okay and say after me It's no better to be safe than sorry and gentle to spirit he friends Wishing he could fly on the trip at the sound of goodbye Wordlessly watching, he waits by the window. Some say it can't be done, but let me tell you how Learn from every saint and sinner on the way It's a big wide world that would be your friend And the more you receive
the corner is a friend of mine And he gets me my drinks for free And he's quick with a joke Or to light up your smoke But there's some days he'd rather be Johnson and um, I'm in my third year as a prayer chaplain and I never prayed with people before I always prayed for people uh, but I didn't learn until I got here to unity about 12 years ago that one of my gifts is intercession and and when I asked for a definition for the word, I was told that it meant that my gift is to pray. So it took me several years to get here.
heart means that you are allowing, it's like being faithful to, to that calling, to that message. It's subtle, sometimes can scare you because it might be opposite to what the mind or the ego says. But being in that purity of the space of the heart and being faithful to that and trusting it and follow its lead will not only get us to where we ultimately want to be, but it's we, we will see the greatness of the divine in our lives. for our Easter egg hunt and look for all your treasures. Hi, I have my Easter treasure. Do you have yours? I have my Easter treasure. Do you have yours? I have my Easter treasure. Do you have yours? I've got my Easter treasure. Do you have yours? I've got my Easter treasure. How about you? Hi, did you get your Easter treats? Happy Easter. We're really looking forward to seeing you this Easter here at the church for the first time in a long time. Our hearts are open just as our doors will be open to all of you. I'll be here to see you, to smile at you and play and look for all these treasures. Don't forget to come and have a good time. We love you and we bless you. And we certainly appreciate you. We behold the Christ in you. And we're holding candy for you. Yes. See you. of heart means that you are allowing it's like being faithful to to that calling to that message it's subtle sometimes can scare you because it might be opposite to what the mind or the ego says but being in that purity of the space of the heart and being faithful to that and trusting it and follow its lead will not only get us to where we ultimately want to be, but it's we, we will see the greatness of the divine in our lives.
Welcome to Unity of the Triangle. Today we Morning. welcome you and we're happy that you're here with us. I'm going to be talking with Anna Quintana today as part of our service. Uh, today, we're, because today we're going to be doing a dialogue. So look forward to having a nice conversation with Reverend Newsom, whose birthday is going to be tomorrow. Happy birthday. 28 years old. <laughs> One more time. <laughs> So we celebrate you and we celebrate life and we celebrate our community. And I look forward to uh, this whole service today. Yeah, me too. Let's get started with music. whole year since we've been in the sanctuary, but the prayer ministry has been active this entire time. We've continued to hold names in the prayer box in prayer. The prayer chaplains have continued making their prayer calls. We've even extended calls to congregants. And the prayer chaplains are now available between services on Zoom for one-on-one -on -one private prayer. So let us pray. We center our thoughts and feelings on the secret place of the Most High in the realm of God's goodness. We give our full attention to the divine rather than the conditions of our outer lives and experiences. As we cleanse our thoughts and beliefs of lack, unforgiveness, limitation, and even the health of our body temples, we become freer to think of the qualities inherent in the divine. We set the intention to allow these God qualities to express in us and as us. When we shift our inner thinking and feelings 
to only the right thinking of God, our lives unfold in the outer world as our thoughts held in our inner world. As a man thinketh, so he becomes. The only power we have over our outer experiences and conditions is the way we think and feel and experience life from our inner world. As within, so without. Our within and our without must be in harmony and alignment with God's goodness. As we thirst and hunger for the righteousness or right thinking of the divine, we claim God's wisdom and grace is filling every part of our being and our world. May every name in this prayer box, including ourselves, embody right thinking and be filled with the goodness of God. We rest in gratitude for this truth, and so we let it be. Amen. Anna Quintana and I are going to talk about the Beatitudes, which we have been studying over the last few weeks. The Beatitudes are part of the Sermon on the Mount, and uh, they are encapsulations of Jesus' teachings. And so as you study the Beatitudes, you can touch on much of what Jesus had to teach us about how to live well and to be uh, a holy person and also to be a successful person. So, uh, Anna, I know you've been studying the Beatitudes and doing it in the Spanish service as well. So I wanted to ask you, what's your favorite? Um, well, of all the Beatitudes, uh, my favorite one is, Blessed are the pure of heart, for they shall see God. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. I love that one, too. So tell me, uh, what does it mean to you? Well, um, first of all, you know, I'm a, a Jesus person. And, mm -hmm. uh, and to me, uh, the idea of the Christ consciousness it's like many of us feel that it's our aim to really experience this Christ consciousness and connecting with Jesus and Jesus' teachings in a metaphysical way. It's almost like a, a, a doorway to the ultimate wisdom of his teachings. And that's why unity to me, it's, uh, it's really the way because it shows you uh, really a, a deeper truth that we can work with and why the uh, pure of heart? Because um, I have come to believe in my own path, Newsom, that putting the interest of the heart, it's the way to, to happiness, it's the way to freedom. It's even though we might go through certain troubles as we allow and trust the heart's um, direction, ultimately, it's the way of experiencing the presence and the kingdom of God that Jesus spoke about. So being uh, pure of heart means that you are allowing, it's like being faithful to, to that calling, to that message. It's subtle. Sometimes it can scare you because it might be opposite to what the mind or the ego says. But being in that purity of the space of the heart and being faithful to that and trusting it and follow its lead will not only get us to where we ultimately want to be, but it's we, we will see the greatness of the divine in our lives. And, and that's why I'm, I'm all for that beatitude, because at the end of the day, beyond solving our life, situ life problems or, or challenges, we're really here to merge, to be one with the one. And, and that's the way, the purity of heart. Was that, that a long explanation? Or <laughs> well, Anna, I, I, let me just delve into this phrase, pure yeah. of heart, yeah. as opposed to in the heart alone. Right. So what makes the heart pure? Is it when the heart is pure or when... So one of my thoughts around that was that as the unconscious becomes cleaned up, mm -hmm. it becomes pure. And um, Emmett Fox would say that the 
the heart represents the unconscious of the human being. Mm -hmm. And that that heart is um, what really is govern governs our lives. You know, we talk about consciousness governing your life. And many times you have a, a thought on the surface, but if the underneath is not in agreement, it's the underneath that wins. And right. if the, your unconscious, which is bigger and per, more persistent, if that does not is not pure, purified in essence, I'm guessing uh, another way of saying it, then the you may have the fleeting thought of "I love everyone," but underneath you are having an experience of anger and frustration, and that then becomes what is reflected to the back to you, and keeps you from seeing the face of God in everything. And I must agree, but also disagree in some. Oh, <laughs> sorry. Because, you know, when you're talking the unconscious and the, you know, subconscious and unconscious and superconscious, it, we're still dealing with the mind. And the mind, to me, operates at the, you know, third dim dimension. But the heart, it's like, um, it's the, it's, it's like, uh, it, the doorway to another um, experience that has not been touched or conditioned by any mind. So we could be, of course, non-pure by holding error thoughts or, or wounds in our consciousness that we carry. And of course, we need to deal with that in order to change our life and our experience. But even, even if you are still struggling with that, you can tap into the wisdom of, of that heart that is completely pure and untouched and unconditioned to almost get the, the power and the strength to then cope with the cleansing of the unconsciousness. Unconscious. Are you buying yeah, that? I'm, well, yeah, I, I kind of get your point. You know, of course, the, the semantics of everything right. is mm -hmm. part of the problem with, at this level of conversation, but so what you're saying is that there is a a persistent purity within you at all times, that irrespective of what's happening in your mind, at any point of your mind. Right. Right. And so that you could tap into that. If you can tap into it, that will also clear up your mind. Is that what you said? Right. And it could maybe we could even relate it to the idea of a super conscious or the or divine mind or our higher self where um, it's 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 there. It's our real nature. And it's it's when we allow our even through our willingness to say, I know I'm wounded. I know um, there's work to be done in me, but I can have a timeless moment in which I tap into that and the miraculous happens where, where something bigger that what we can even understand takes over and does it for us. Right, right. So I, pure... Uh -huh. Go ahead. So pure of heart, I guess when we are... I would say uh, in that willingness to be like a like a child, you know, you, you suggest to say you have to be like a child to enter the kingdom of heaven. We are in that state of innocence and purity that um, ignites the heart space. Okay, so let's talk about how to get in the do it. How I to mean, get there? Yeah, to the goodies. Yeah. <laughs> You're asking me or you're going to say? I'm asking say, you. You're, I'm asking you yes, and you're telling yeah. me. <laughs> well, um, interesting how the spirit works, Nusam, because uh, lately I've been doing a lot of journaling about this. And, and what is it that I can consciously do to tap into that space and to stay there and to recognize how does it feel when I'm not? Mm -hmm. And what I have been experiencing in, in my own process, that when I am not honoring, uh, because I'm so, you know, like paying attention to my ego mind and to my thoughts or my habits, 
And, and, and that leads me to maybe analyze a situation in a different way uh, or see somebody in a different fashion. What I am experiencing is actual pain. Like, this is not you, Anna. This is, this, you're not in sync with, with, with you. So what I have found that really helps into coming back to, to the heart space, I would say that it's um, when I trust, I'm in my heart. When I forgive, I'm in my heart. When I can express and be in a state of gratitude, I'm in my heart. When I, and this is a big one, to me this is the most important and the most difficult. Do you want to know what that is? I'm on the come edge on, of my come stool. On. You, what, what, I know what? you know, so you know the answer. I'm asking, <laughs> but I'm asking the question. So tell okay. me what you're thinking. The surrender. Really? That's your hard one? I guess that's everybody's hardest because you're losing control. The ego is like, uh, you have no, no saying in this party. You're, you're saying, um, I surrender to this process. I let, I let it be. I, um, it's almost welcoming the feminine and not saying I got, I have to do it. It's allowing it to be done. Yeah. And, uh, and then the other, the other, um, practice that, um, and this is not very unity, I must say. Not that we are not, but this is where the, uh, maybe some, uh, Hindu groups do better. And like the Sagrava folks, this community that we are, so uh, fond of, even the, from the rally committee, the devotional, the devotional aspect of the divine, the Shakti Yoga that Ram Das talks about, in which we we have a practice of being in the heart and showing um, praise for the divine, singing. This is all heart stuff that really brings me back to to that space and that purity. That's why I sing and I dance, Newsom. I, I'm sure that's all the reason that you do it. Is <laughs> um, I, I want to say, Anna, that let's let's deal with this idea. Let's go through those uh, yeah. a little bit slower, uh, okay. so that we can cover it. So the w one thing that we, the one that stuck out for me at first was this idea of forgiveness. And I think you know this. Um, for me the practice of forgiveness is really um, so fundamental to actually being whole and complete yourself. You know, if you will forgive another, then you have extended grace to them, but also to yourself. And, um, and when we do the forgiveness thing, you're right. The ego has to take second place. Um, and if it's really done well, you're not doing it either. There's something that's happening right. through you. It's like you ask to help for help, and it usually comes, and often quite quickly, but it helps you let go of something. And that begins this open space for your heart, which a hardened heart is one that's unforgiven, you know, unforgiving too. And so um, so there's forgiveness. And, and then the, the other one you, you mentioned was that's really big for you is surrender. So how do you get to that? I think we cannot surrender without trust and faith. And when I have trouble surrendering, I try to do this mental exercise of doing a life review and try to bring experiences in my life that I have seen the power of the divine take over and, and bring forth the blessing or the good, even though I might have been questioning and, and resisting the process, ultimately I would see like a divine order beautifully expressed through the whole experience. And, and reviewing that and, and getting in tune with that emotion, I transport that into the present moment and say, I might be questioning I might not trust fully, but if God did it before, it can it can be done, and and I have to accept my my limitations as a human. I I don't know everything. Mm -hmm. That's why when you 
uh, recently when you were doing the Beatitude on the meek, it's really the a process of surrender. You're saying, I, I, as a human, through education or or through willpower or um, through big effort, there's so much I can do. Only so much. You Only can. so much you can do. Yeah. 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 I, I, I really, I, I think uh, we, we talked a little bit about this whole thing where you open yourself up to let it flow through you and, and more can happen when that happens than if you do it yourself. It's not I, but the Christ within that right. does the work, right? That. So um, let's come to devotion. So one of the things about unity in general, I think, unity and, and my, my um, practice of unity has not been a very devotional one. Mm-hmm. You know, it's been a bit of time for meditation and there's, um, uh, reading and learning, but devotion, singing, dancing, or the like, not so much, right? <laughs> we know, we know. <laughs> uh-huh. So I, I want to say, Anna, um, you you bring another practice. So let's. Why don't you talk about it since <laughs> you're like that? Well, the definition of devotion it's an intense love, and and what I'm seeing in my own process, Newsom and everybody. It's that um, the deeper I give myself to the to the spiritual path and to my life purpose and to following the, the lead of the heart and seeing how doing that, it's like um, you might have temporary setbacks, but ultimately, ultimately there is success and and and, and uh, blessings in the process. So um, knowing that and experiencing that has developed this passion for God. And, and I realized that many of us go into a prayer practice with an agenda, you know, like, oh, I need to pray for X or Y. But seldom we go into the prayer practice to just praise and be in gratitude. And uh, um, and just be there in a in a love relationship with the divine. And to me, you know, sometimes by listening to a song, um, being in nature and walking with my Apple Music and my favorite songs and hugging a tree, it's like I'm with all of life. It's 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 a hard experience, and I'm seeing God in all of that. Sometimes I bring your dogs along. I don't know if I told you, but <laughs> yeah. So, uh, you, so we're back to the idea of the pure of heart will see God, and is that the way you get into that? The easiest, the purity of of the experience through the devotion. You mean? Yeah. I think it's a combination of factors, and um, I almost feel that we we constantly have a choice to listen to what the ego or the program mind is saying versus what the heart is saying. And it it takes strength because many times when you do that choice it might not be a popular one and you don't have you don't have any guarantees. But this is where the trust comes that you can never be led astray when you are faithful to that. That's your connection with the divine. And I'm seeing over and over again. And let me tell you, Newsom, that's what being in this church has meant for me because we do a lot of recognition of, of that heart space. You know, there's a lot of mind management in unity, but here we bring that aspect of ourselves and it's been a gift. I do think it's uh, one of the distinguishing things. One of the things I, when I came here, that we started doing with every meditation, we would always touch into the heart. And um, I had someone uh, at a minister's conference saying, you know, I think your church has been successful because, you know, I believe she said you incorporate Buddhism with your, uh, mm-hmm. with the, and I said, no, I don't think so. I think it's because we touch into the heart every day, every time we do it. 
And so that becomes the energy of the building, the energy of the congregation, the feel of it when you walk into it. And when people walk into the church, they go, oh, I feel at home. Yeah. And it's not because the Buddha said so. <laughs> you know, it's because their heart opens. And being in that space of the heart, of the pure purity of the heart, it's experiencing God, not someone experiencing the kingdom. And not necessarily we can express that through words or even thoughts. It's, it's beyond all of that. That's beautiful, Anna. I'm glad I asked you the question. <laughs> and thanks for knowing, having a good and, and a cogent answer that we could follow and that you could, it could be a teaching moment for you to explain your experience. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome back. It is our time to meditate and bring all of this wisdom internally. So please join us at this moment by closing your eyes. And taking a deep centering, healing breath. That will help you calm the mind while opening your heart. As we open the heart, we know that little by little we are all becoming one heart. At this sacred moment in which we are streaming the service or maybe replaying it, we are all coming together to experience the presence. To tuning in with the beauty and the power of the divine. So keep breathing and keep being, allowing the center of your heart to start expanding and opening like a rose, petal by petal. We open fully by being aware of it 
and recognizing that it is through the heart intelligence that we know that we receive the guidance that we can love unconditionally that we can forgive freely and that we can trust and surrender we become aware of that that at the level of the mind there are limitations there's resistance but in the heart there's always this readiness to be in sync with our true nature so stay there with us and let the love be see that center as your power center for there is unlimited power in the love in the trust in the surrender that we experience in the heart that allows us to see god to experience the kingdom to be amazed by the wonders of the divine in our lives and we pledge faithfulness to the heart to stay pure and willing anchored as we've been moving toward our heart and some of us are already in it let us relax more deeply into that Let the heart be the space that you're living in. Imagine it's all heart at this point. We can do that by feeling. Feeling the sense of love and quiet. Feeling the sense of connection and power. Feeling the connection of peace and life. Ask you to fall into this space more deeply, to lean back into it and fall surrendered into the space of the heart. To let go and drop in.
falling in toward the source. We practice trust and surrender and letting go. And not being our ego, but being the one who is falling back to the source. Into thy hands I release my spirit. I may take a moment or two to come out of this, so just be with it. Feel the body, feel the toes, feel the hands, but keep feeling the heart even as we come out. that you have felt connected to your own heart and felt the purity of your own heart as you've done so. And that the place of the heart has given you peace and given you a sense of knowing the divine better. And we also hope that this, you carry this with you throughout the week, that this not become a moment on Sunday, but an experience you can return to and even reside in. The being in this brings us to a state of abundance and generosity, of peace and light. So we celebrate those things. We realize that this is life, the divine moving through us as us. And as such, there's all that we need. And as such, we get in the flow of giving and receiving. For we're no longer afraid, but live with confidence that all is well. And so it is. And so it is. I see trees of green, red roses too. I see them blue for me and for you. And I think to myself, what a wonderful world. I see skies of blue, clouds of white, bright blessed days, and dark sacred nights. And I think to myself, what a wonderful world. All the colors of the rainbow, so pretty in the sky, are also on the faces. Of the people passing by I see friends holding hands Saying how do you do They're really saying I love you 
you. I hear babies cry. I watch them grow as they learn much more than I'll ever know. And I think to myself, what a wonderful world. Yes, I think to myself, what a wonderful world. It's been a beautiful Sunday, and I want to thank Anna for sharing the time with me on this thank dialogue so about the Beatitudes. And I, I would like to remind you we have a blood drive coming up on Thursday. You can go to the website to see the information about it. And then next Sunday will be Palm Sunday, and with that, the beginning of the Holy Week. We are having a Good Friday celebration and Easter celebration both online. So um, again, just go to our website for more details. And we once again want to thank you for joining us. We look forward to seeing you next week when we celebrate Palm Sunday. Stay pure in heart. The light of God surrounds us. I am the light of God. The love of God enfolds us. I am the love of God. The power of God protects us. I am the power of God. And the presence of God watches over us. I am the presence of God. Wherever, Wherever we, we are, are God, God is and, and all is well. Is well.